Oh, Sasha, I mean, Liberty London Girl is a huge hit. It is a global hit. But can you take me back to life before the site started, life before your blog? What were you doing and what was it like? I always wanted to be a writer, always, and I always loved taking photographs. But I didn't have the confidence to pursue any of those things. You know, the idea of getting an internship at Vogue or using any of the contacts I might have was utterly terrifying to me, so I just didn't do it. Um, but I'm proud, you know, I was a secretary, I temped, I did lots of things before I ended up at Vogue House, and I think it was, well, I'm a fully trained silver service waitress, you know, <laughs> I have got a fallback career. Um, well, now that you've written a book about food and entertaining, <laughs> it, it all comes in useful. It does. Um, and I ended up as a fashion reporter for an online news site um, nearly 15 years ago, so I wow, really was... early doors. We were, there was no CMS, I was filing via email to New York three times a day. Um, and it folded after 9-11, as so many media properties did. It was just too early, mm -hmm. and I went into a bit of a limbo. I had a bit of a breakdown for two years, and I actually temped. I went and worked in, I worked at Bow Street Magistrates' quarters in Emanuensis. Um, and then I got a lucky break through a friend, and I ended up working as a fashion stylist again, and I did that for a, f a few years. Um, I went to the Observer, to the O Magazine, and worked as their executive fashion editor. And then I moved to New York, and that's when my life changed. Um, and I started Liberty London Girl nine years ago this September. And what was the original idea? With I mean, what was it going to be? Because I'm assuming that it's, it's grown beyond your wildest imaginings. Oh, my God, I would have thought you were on crack if someone had told me I'd be sitting up here talking about my business. There's been some real lows. I mean, I slept in my car when I first started building this business. So, yeah, I, this has all been quite unexpected. There was no plan. I get terrified mm. by a lot of very young bloggers now who have, like, business plans. I've never had a business plan. Um, I started LRG in September 2006, and I remember it very clearly. I'd been reading about Belle de Jour, the... Um, Cool Girls blog. It's the only blog I'd ever seen when I started my own. And clearly I wasn't going to emulate that in practice. <laughs> um, but she got a book deal. And I was a writer, but I wasn't a very successful writer at that point. I could not get myself commissioned for love or money. I could get myself commissioned as a stylist, but not as a writer. And I did bits and pieces for Elle, and, but it wasn't you know, coming through. And I love this idea that there was a place where I could write for me. Mm. And back then, I know it sounds very odd, but having an opinion was quite an unusual thing. Because if you had an opinion, you either wrote a column or you put it in a diary. There wasn't really anywhere else to have an opinion. Because if you're a reporter, you don't really have an opinion. You are reporting the facts. And I love the idea that there was somewhere I could write without an editor, without let or hindrance, and when no one knew it was me, because I had no confidence. And I was scared that people would find out it was me. I thought it would be a hindrance to my career as a writer if people knew I was writing a blog. Right. So, so you were kind <laughs> of in the shadows for a while, right? I was anonymous for nearly three, four years, I think. Okay. Um, and how was that double life? Well, I do remember in 2007 when I was freelancing, living in New York, covering the launch of the new Topshop um, Kate Moss collection, which went into Barney's before it went into shops. And I wrote about it for Vogue.com for free, but I wanted the byline, obviously. And I remember ringing up as Vogue.com and then being very nice in the Topshop press office and then ringing up as Liberty London Girl and they wouldn't answer my phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> no! So literally, because bloggers back then, we just didn't really exist. We were sort of in the ether. And, and how the worm has turned, it's, to, it's all to, it's the opposite way around now. Well, there was no social media for me to use back then, so I couldn't promote my blog. I didn't join Facebook till the summer of 2007. Mm. So, and, and even then, because I was anonymous, the idea of a Facebook page didn't exist then anyway. So I just carried on wibbling away. Tell me about, the, about any mentors that have helped you on the way. As you say, you've had this very kind of um, diverse and, and unusual career route to get where you are. But I wonder who are the people, and especially if they're women, who either inspired or helped you to get where you are? A lot of the time I felt like I'd been sort of shouting into the ether because there was no one doing what I did and to a degree there still isn't anybody doing what I'm doing which is building a sort of a media company and a brand around a blog in my demographic and age group. I sort of do still stand quite alone. But what has helped me hugely is people having faith in me. That's been the most extraordinary thing. That and my readers. Because mm -hmm. your readers when you have a blog almost mentor you as well because they give you advice. You know, it's a conversation, not a broadcast they when you write to. a blog. Yeah. And th but they leave comments and they talk. You know, when you write in a newspaper or an old school one, it's all green ink and pubic hair. You don't really sort of engage with the readers very much because they're a bit terrifying. <laughs> On a blog, they actually talk to you and they're great and they're lovely people. But 
you know, I've had commissions as a journalist when I've been a blogger, which have made me go, oh, well, I'm, I am a good writer. And it's been an amazing journey ever since then. Onwards and upwards from now. It's absolutely fantastic. Sasha, thank you so much. Um, thank you for that. You. It's, what a story. Okay, I'm now going to welcome um, the pool's very own Elle Turner to the stage to ask a couple of questions. Hello, Elle. Now, Elle is our fashion, beauty, and picture intern. She's been with the pool for three months, and this is her first full-time paid job in the industry after interning free for a year. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. And really nice to meet you, too. Um, so I just wondered, um, how did you decide to make the shift from print media to online media? Um, it was a by accident. It was just that I had this online portal. And when I moved to New York in the uh, spring of 2007, I, all my girlfriends in London wanted to know what was happening. Was I meeting cute guys? And you know, did I have the world's most amazing job on Vogue? Sadly, neither thing was true. But as I wrote about the fact that none of these things were true, my, I decided that my emails were quite funny. And I remember that I'd set up this blog, which I hadn't done much with. So I started, to, instead of writing emails home, I just put them on the blog. So that's how it started. And I just loved doing it. But there was never any light bulb moment. And I do still write for print. Um, what are the benefits of blogging and social media? Um, gosh, gosh, how do I even condense that? Um, there are, for me, there's been so many personally, I think, having confidence in what I do. Being solvent is nice. I quite like being able to pay the bills. I'm very keen on that. Um, the people I've met... I think has been extraordinary, and then the opportunities I've been given. I mean, and I live such a diverse life. You know, yesterday I was in the windows of my so rude rider shop, styling their windows for them for free, as because I thought their windows needed a bit of a zhuzh. <laughs> this morning at 9 a.m. I was interviewing a dermatologist. I spent the, the rest of the morning in a global tech company doing consultancy with their CEO on a new launch. Um, then I went and had my hair done, <laughs> and then Remy and I spent the afternoon in the garden doing the shoot for Topshop, and now I'm here. To have a life that's that full, where I meet so many extraordinary people on such on a daily basis, is a huge privilege. So that sounds a bit a bit oh Pollyanna, but it really is. Also, my sister's got MS, so I quite like to lure people into the blog with a bit of lipstick and sausage dog, and then give them a bit of a one-two of disability rights. Yes. <laughs> my word! Thank you so much. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Elle. That was so brilliant. Much.